Well, welcome back to Inside the Issues. I'm Alex Cohen, and we are talking about ride sharing in Southern California. Drivers say that working for companies like Lyft and Uber can be a great way to make some quick cash, set your own schedule, meet new people, travel all over town. But some days just sucks. <laughs> That is a video titled, Let's Just Say I Didn't Have the Best Day. It was made by Dave Livaday, a.k.a. Dave the Uber Slave, who joins me now in studio along with Sergio Avedian. Both gentlemen uh, drive cars around here in Southern California. Sergio, let's start with you. How did you get into this ride-sharing world and why? I got into ride-sharing about four years ago. Um, originally, I was actually on Wall Street for about 18 years, and then became a PGA pro, uh, professional, actually, instructor. Um, then about four years ago, we were t discussing with a friend of ours, uh, he was doing right here, and then I said, you know, let me just give this thing a try. And I started doing it, and initially it was great. It was fantastic, and now it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's the good, the bad and the ugly now. Now they have cut the rates so much. On we're us gonna, that, that we're going to get to that. Better, yeah. We're going to get to that. How it kind of went from this wonderful world to maybe it not was, so yeah. wonderful one. Uh, Dave, how did you get into this world, and why the name Dave the Uber Slave? Before I started driving for Uber, I had a driving job for a talent agency in LA, and I was able to make more money driving for Uber. So I switched over to mm. driving for Uber. Um, the my channel. Dave yeah, the Uber Slave. Dave the Uber Slave. Just yeah, that name. YouTube. How'd you get it? Well, okay, my friend started calling me that because I was kind of addicted to driving. He would tell me, like, hey, let's go to the beach, let's go surf. And I was like, uh, I'm working, you know? And I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to make money. I was, like, focused on making money. And in the beginning, it was pretty good. Yeah. So, so he, he would call so me. So when you say you were addicted to it, though, but what was it about it for you that was so compelling? What so, did you like? So my friend, as a joke, would call me Dave the Uber Slave yeah. on the phone, like. Yeah. But, but what was addicting? Yeah. Picking up new people, meeting new people, like 20 different people or more a day. Yeah. Um, and then also, it's kind of like a game, working in, in an app. I, I really like working through an app, huh. like not having to deal with a boss. And you just, you, you pick up your people, you drop them off. It, you feel very free. Yeah. You know, it's not like a normal job. I mean, yeah. That's the other thing is I've been in LA for over 25 years, right? Uh, half of the town I didn't even know. So oh. it takes you places that you've never been. So it's kind of a cool thing just to drive and discover parts of town that you know. Like is there a spot downtown before? that you really like eating but you live on the west side? Yeah. Well you go drive a few passengers around eventually you're gonna be downtown and then you can go stop and get a sandwich at Philippe's. Yeah, yep. oh, and, and who does not love a sandwich at Philippe's? Okay, so I'm seeing all the bright and shiny aspects of it, but Sergio, as you mentioned, you loved it at first, and then it kind of started, your feelings were more complicated. When did you start kind of noticing, hey, this wasn't what it used to be? And well, what were some of the, the signs for you? Well, as a point of reference, right? So when UberX, which is the most popular um, platform on Uber, where most people order it, um, it started in 2012, July 4th. Um, at that time, it was $3.25 a mile that the driver would get paid. Yeah. It's seven years later, we're at 60 cents a mile. Wow. Driver gets paid 60 cents a mile. Yeah. So you could tell, I mean, that's down about 70%, right? And from four years ago to now, most drivers Gross earnings, I would say, is probably down 50 to 60 percent. Yeah, and and I'm just going to reiterate here that we reached out to both Uber and Lyft because we would have loved to, to have heard it from their side. But what I we would can, have too. <laughs> yeah, right. But what we can take away from a lot of the news headlines over the years is that they launched with this great idea, but then figuring out how to pay for it has been the real challenge for them. Uh, well, I mean, Alex, it's like the, there's three groups of people who are very happy about this. Yeah, obviously the top executives, right? And then the VCs, uh, venture capitalists, who initially invested in it and got about 10,000% return on their money, yeah. and the passenger. So all three groups are living in a subsidized fantasy land, pretty yeah. much, except the driver. Yeah. So to us is, I mean, at 60 cents a mile, when the government allows you a 58 cent deduction, 
how many two cents can you put together yeah. to make money? I know. Right? I, I hear you. And, and our viewers might recall that back in May, Uber drivers in 10 cities, including here in Los Angeles, uh, they staged a, a strike for what they said was a lack of transparency, I was unfair there. pay. So Dave, was talk to, yeah, Dave, talk to me about what that day was like and whether or not you feel like your concerns have been heard at all by these companies. Um, okay, so ever since Uber started, they play hardball. Mm. Like, they fight for what they want. And really the protest was about getting attention from different labor groups, which they, they have like responded and the different, uh, every city has their own group that are protesting and they're in communication and we've gotten a lot of support. But like, it was really more about just getting attention. Yeah. And I feel like we've achieved that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, media coverage Part of was, why I'm here right now, know, I feel, is those protests. This yeah. was not the first strike or whatever you want to call it, right. protest. Um, the first one was last year, and there were maybe 30, 40 drivers. At this one, there were close to four, 500 drivers. Hmm. So there is a small group in, in Los Angeles. It's called uh, Rideshare Drivers United, RDU. Yep. Um, they are doing a fantastic job. They're up to about 6,000 members now. They're not a union. They're just a group. Yeah. And the, they were there, and, and a lot of other people were there, but the problem is there's about 60 to 80,000 rideshare drivers in Los Angeles, and you can't reach them because Uber has their information. Mm. So we can't put people together to, you know, voice our, you know, concerns, and, and, and Uber and Lyft uh, just kind of put them aside and just go, you know, hey, uh, we'll deal with it when we have to deal with I it. I went to Sacramento for the protests a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And these were, no. and we should just couch uh, for our viewers, these were slightly different protests in that this was specifically looking at Assembly Bill 5, uh, which has to do, and we've actually spent a whole hour on this, looking at the difference between independent contractors uh, and full-time employees. And it got a little bit confusing because there were people, there were rideshare drivers on both sides of the issues that were there. I just want right. to the day out. I went up was yeah. the day that Uber set up the protest. Uber, DoorDashers, Postmaters, like they're all risking becoming employees. So they, they, the companies set up their own protest and actually paid people to come out, like with vouchers. Yeah. And they provided like food from all these different food trucks. And it just seems really shady to me. They, they also gave us these shirts that say, I'm independent. I should have brought this shirt to yeah. show you. But yeah, it's. But just to put, I mean, just to push back, look, I, I understand, I think it's really interesting politically. You know, there are people who get paid to gather signatures for petitions. Politics doesn't work without money. So it's, it's a complicated question, but I want to rein it back in for a moment because what's interesting is that both of you in the midst of things changing and maybe not being as great as it used to be, um, have launched these kind of side hustles. You've got your YouTube channel, which we saw. Uh, Sergio, you are a ride sharing coach, which I think is just fascinating. Right. We've only got about a minute left, but can you sure. talk about the work that you do with new drivers to make sure. their worlds a bit I better? I mean, you know, the, the, well, I'm a senior contributor with the Rideshare Guy, who's probably the largest blog in the country, yeah. and I'm their Los Angeles driver coach, right? So keep it simple. Um, if you want to feed a man, give him a fish, and if you want to feed a man for life, teach him how to fish. So. Yeah. You know, ride share is not a complicated thing, okay? It's not rocket science. You get in your car, you drive, you put gas, you keep driving, but you have to have a strategy. Without a strategy, you're going to average about maybe $15 an hour gross, that's before expenses. With a strategy, with some help, with knowing your city where it's gonna surge, when it's gonna surge, obviously. Um, then you can increase your earnings probably six to seven dollars an hour. What's one little strategy? Like what's it? Oh, one little strategy is how, do you, how to start, how to position yourself correctly and be mm -hmm. patient and not accept every uh, request and that Uber sends you. Filters. Yeah, you, well, th that's that's like. He was telling me you give me some good tips on destination. Can explain, explain this. What should you do with the destination filter? Well, destination filter is Uber allows us two filters a day, to let's say. I take a ride from LAX and end up in Newport Beach. Yeah. So from Newport Beach, I have to, I don't want to keep going further south, right? So destination filter stops rides from taking you further south. Yeah. But what it does also is that I can set my destination filter from Newport Beach back to LAX, let's say. Mm. And then whoever's going to LAX from Newport Beach, I will get matched with that passenger. But 
it, it allows you to get back into the core, it allows you to get back home. A lot of drivers use it to get back home at night at the end of the day, which I teach them not to do, but that's that's their prerogative. I love obviously. it. You, you learned how to figure out Wall Street, you learned how to figure out golf, and now you're figuring out ride well, yeah. sharing. Sergio, Dave, Thank it has you. been great chatting with you both. Thank you for driving by our studios. Thank, Thank you, you, Alex.